Hello friends. Today I thought we might take another look at five more records from my final record collection. And as usual, we can look at the album art, the vinyl itself, any little extra goodies that might be in the packaging, and I'll try to give my thoughts on each one. Okay, we will go in the order of release year, starting with the oldest. So up first we have Ambient One, Music for Airports by Brian Eno from 1978. Here's a look at the verse of the cover art. Here's a look at the final and its center label. So Music for Airports is a, well, one of the first truly sort of ambient albums. Brian Eno was a, um, or I suppose I should say is an English artist, but he worked with a lot of bands as a producer, like um, he worked with David Bowie and John Cale and Nico. And he was also in the band Roxy Music, which most of those are very different than this album. But this ambient one has become a sort of touchstone for other artists who are interested in creating ambient music, minimalistic music, electronic music. And this is uh, a lot of times serves as a sort of template for that. Uh, I think it was mainly created using spliced tape loops. It was a big part of creating this sort of atmospheric sound. And in, in Brian Eno's own words, this 
genre was meant to induce calm and a space to think. I think this album definitely does that. So if you're into that sort of chill music you can have on in the background, you can pay attention to it or not. Especially if you like ambient music and if you're not familiar with this album, definitely check it out. That's Ambient One, Music for Airports by Brian Eno from 1978. So next up I have Laughing Stock by Talk Talk from 1991. Here's a look at the rear cover. It's mostly just song names and credits. And here's the vinyl with its label. So, Talk Talk is an English band, and I want to say they started their career in more of a pop genre. I think maybe their most famous song is It's My Life from the, I think that's from the 80s. But they, late in their career, like I think their final two or three albums are much more experimental. And I think, in my opinion, this is, is the sort of pinnacle of that experimentation that they did near the end of their careers. This was their final studio album together. And it's a... one of the first, I guess, one of the first post-rock albums. Um, it's art rock, experimental, I think you could even make a case for it being a bit of avant-garde jazz inspired or adjacent. But a lot of bands will cite this album as one of their sort of inspirational or aspirational goals uh, to create something that is uh, maybe as important or meaningful, cohesive as laughing stock. The main, or I guess the lead of the band uh, is Mark Hollis, who went on to release an album, self-titled album with his name and it's almost an extension of the ideas that you can find in this album and the previous one or two at the end of Talk Talk's career. 
but if you're a fan of early post-rock um, experimental music that's melodic and cohesive it's good music to play while you're trying to get things done I've found it's also really well produced produced so if you are for example wanting to test a new audio system or speakers this is a nice album to do that with yeah that's laughing stock stock by talk talk from 1991 Moving into something a bit heavier, I have Brand New and their album Deja Entendu. I think that's how it's pronounced. This is from 2003. This is a double LP, so it has two vinyl records. And this is also a gatefold album cover, so we can take a look at the inside of that. I've always really liked this album art. I'm a big fan of space, and I guess anything with an astronaut would my cup of tea, but I find it very visually striking. Here's the reverse side. And if we look on the inside of the gatefold, we have sort of a different take on that idea. Which I really like. Let's see if there are any goodies in here. I can't remember. sheet which has more of that art style on the front and on the rear we have the song lyrics credits here at the bottom. So, pretty simple little insert, but it's still nice to have. As for the vinyl, here's what the center labels of both records look like.
So brand new is a, or I should say was a, uh, band from Long Island, New York. They were, I guess you could categorize them as emo, um, alt-rock, indie rock, maybe post-hardcore. I don't think that I have listened to every one of their albums, but I definitely listened to mm, maybe two or three of their full albums in, in full. And of the ones that I have heard, this is definitely my favorite by far. I haven't listened to it in a while, but I, from my memory, I, I don't think there's a song on it that I don't like, which is kind of rare for a full album. But when I was researching the band for the video, I did not know this, but apparently the album title Deja and Tandu is French for something along the lines of feels like I've heard this before. Which I think is very in line when they, with their brand and ethos in this early 2000s era. So, if you're a fan of bands like Taking Back Sunday, maybe Dashboard Confessional, other early 2000s emo bands or indie rock bands. Definitely give this one a listen if you haven't already. This is Deja and Tandu by Brand New from 2003. Next, I have the album Broom by Someone Still Loves You, Boris Yeltsin. Here's the rear of the album cover. And this album is from 2005. I don't think I said that yet. Here's a look at the final label. Someone Still Loves You, Boris Yeltsin is a indie pop, alt-rock band from the U.S. I believe they started in Missouri. And they have very catchy tunes. Most of their albums feel like in a way, they feel like a kind of throwback to maybe the late 60s recording styles and melodic tunes of like the Beatles or other bands like that. But I don't know for sure how this record was produced, but it has a very live playing sound. And by that, I mean that they went into a room all together and hit record and played the songs. So it is not the most pristine production or recordings that you will ever hear, but there's a very 
nostalgic quality to it, and uh, I like the imperfections in records and songs, so that doesn't bother me at all. I also think, although their name is kind of silly, it is <laughs> memorable and maybe one of the most unique band names ever. But if you're a fan of indie pop, sort of light, fun music to drive to traditional four or five piece band sound with guitars and piano, acoustic drums, fun melodies, mostly upbeat. Give Someone Still Loves Your Boris Yeltsin a try. A lot of their albums are similar, but I, I think this one is still my favorite, even though I believe this was their first full-length album. And again, this is Broom from 2005. And then finally, much more modern, I have Muna by Muna. And this is from 2022. Here's a look at the rear of the album cover, which is kind of cool because it's the exact 180 of their front shots. And track listings. So this was their third full-length album. It was their first album on Phoebe Bridger's label Satisfactory, Saddest Factory. And actually maybe the first album on that label period, but I'm not 100% sure about that. It has to be one of the first. But this is a very um, fun, upbeat, synth-pop album. Very catchy melodies. Uh, the lead singer, here the redhead, has a very unique and beautiful voice, and um, I think also writes the lyrics um, to most of the songs, so it's just a really, really fun album the album that you want to put on in the background and when you feel like dancing or it's a great album to drive to. Most of the songs are upbeat but there are a few really well done melodic sort of slower songs. And if you're a fan of Phoebe Bridgers she appears on the first song Silk Chiffon. Yeah, if you're if you are a fan of the synth pop genre or new wave music, um, electronic 
music in general, but especially sort of vintage synth led poppy electronic music, then definitely give Muna by Muna a try from 2022. So those are the five albums that I brought this time. I um, hope you enjoyed that. Would love to hear if you've ever listened to these uh, records or maybe seeing them here would make you interested in listening. Um, I'm always open to hearing what you're listening to. I love to find new music and new artists, so uh, leave a comment. I hope this video finds you well and maybe a little less anxious. Until next time, goodbye.